Hi everyone, it's Dr. LeBlanc with Unit 6D, Regulation of Eukaryotic Gene Expression, Alternative Splicing. Our learning goals are to understand that multiple related polypeptides can be produced from a single eukaryotic gene by alternative splicing. To understand the mechanism of splice site selection, to understand the pattern of alternative splicing of different 5' prime untranslated regions of the brain-derived neurotrophic factor gene, and what that means for targeted expression, and to understand the importance of examining splice variants in the process of developing disease therapies. So many different mechanisms um, for, for controlling expression of genes occur post-transcription. Um, including alternative splicing, RNA stability, RNA interference, and translational regulation of messenger RNAs. Uh, we're going to discuss alternative splicing in this lecture. Alternative splicing occurs when a gene has many different exons um, in between and the introns. This is a diagram of the alpha tropomyosin pre-messenger RNA. This is what's transcribed. Um, the exons and the introns. We want to remove the introns and in this case we want to retain only some of the exons. Um, in this diagram the pink exons are constitutive exons. They are found in all versions of tro the alpha tropomyosin messenger RNA. Um, and then there are some alternative exons that are only present in some of the messenger RNAs after splicing. So this is our initial transcript and this is the messenger RNA, the final messenger RNA that exists in smooth muscle cells. It has exons 1, 4, 5, 6, 9, and 10. All alpha tropomyosins will have those. Um, but it has exon 2 and uh, skipped over exon 3. It has exon 8 but not 7. And it has exon 14, but not 11, 12, and 13. A different pattern of splicing occurs for the messenger RNA for alpha tropomyosin in striated muscles. The conserved exons are present, 1, 4, 5, 6, and 9, and 10. But the green exons, the alternate exons, are different. Instead of exon 2, we have exon 3. And we still retain exon 8 in this version. But instead of exon 14, there are exons 11 and 12. This is not a random event. It is a highly regulated event. So you can have splicing repressors. This is the normal pattern here for this example. You have four exons, the introns are removed, and the four exons are joined together. In the alternate splicing pattern, a repressor blocks the 3' prime splice site here. So if this 3' prime splice site is blocked, the splicing machinery then uses the next 3' prime splice site that it can find. So you'll have splicing here at the 5' prime end attached to this 3' prime end here. Okay, and you'll end up with exons 1, 3, and 4 in your messenger RNA, exon 2 will essentially become part of the intron that is removed when this 5' prime splice site forms a branch and then this 3' prime splice site is cleaved and the intron is removed. So that's what a splicing repressor will do. Some splice sites require the presence of enhancers in order for them to be utilized. So without those enhancers, this exon, excuse me, this exon will be removed. These uh, splice sites are not strong enough to be recognized by the normal machinery on their own, and this splice site will normally splice with this splice site. This 5' prime splice site will normally splice out an intron with this split 3' prime splice site. So the messenger RNA that is normally produced is, has exons 1, 2, and 4, and not 3. If you have the splice site enhancers, however, this splice site, this 3' prime splice site will be utilized, and you'll have an intron from here to here, 
and this splice site will also be utilized and you'll have another intron removed from here to here and exon 3 will be retained mm -hmm. so the mature messenger RNA has exons 1, 2 it has exon 3 and 4 let's look at an example of a uh, very complicated splicing pattern uh, found in brain-derived neurotrophic factor. This is a diagram of the molecule, and this is where the gene lives on chromosome 11 in the short arm. Brain-derived neurotrophic factor has a coding region that encodes the amino acids for the uh, peptide itself. It has a fairly large uh, three-prime untranslated region with the possibility of utilizing either this or this poly a cleavage and polyadenylation site. But it has nine different exons that constitute the five prime untranslated region of the messenger RNA. You have nine different versions of BDNF all with different five prime untranslated regions. The coding region is essentially the same in all of these. So the amino acid sequence of brain-derived neurotrophic factor from each of these different splice variants is not different. What's different is the 5' prime untranslated region. What can this be doing that's different, that's so important for brain-derived neurotrophic factor? Um, as you might expect, this is a fairly complicated maneuver. Here we have um, the splice, the transcriptional start site from exon 4. Lots and lots of proteins bound to lots and lots of DNA elements. Um, we have a chromatin remodeling complexes that are involved, and transcription activating complexes are involved. Um, uh, this change from a silencing to an activating complex is, um, is, is uh, propagated by depolarization. When a nerve fires, um, you can change the uh, activity of the proteins at the um, promoter. Okay, so here's another diagram um, of BDNF from uh, rats and from humans. You notice the similarities here. This paper describes the epigenetic re regulation of BDNF uh, for and its implications for psychiatric disorders. So this, the splicing of these different variants is regulated by epigenetics. Um, this is another paper showing that one important feature of these different splice variants is that the 5' prime untranslated region directs the expression or the translation of this messenger RNA in different parts of the brain. Okay, so here we have expression here for this variant um, it's a different pattern for this variant. Many, 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 many studies have been done on brain-derived neurotrophic factor and um, the, this uh, uh, differences in split five prime uh, untranslated regions spliced onto the messenger RNA. Um, people have found differences in the different splice variants for uh, regula regulation by cocaine. Um, synaptic plasticity, that would mean regrowing neurons after um, an, an injury. Um, they found differences between the, the splice variants in their response to substance abuse and Parkinson's disease. Um, it influences human memory and dendritic compartments or arborization of the neurons. And also, um, mood stabilizers such as lithium and valproate uh, selectively inactivate a pro, one of the promoters of brain-derived neurotrophic factor. So how does that affect brain function? The take-home lesson from this slide is that it's a very important to consider the spliced variants when you are giving patients drugs or medication. So in summary, alternative splicing leads to many different polypeptides being produced from a single gene. Many polypeptides from a single gene. Splice site repressors and splice site enhancers control the tissue specificity of splice variants. Brain-derived neurotrophic factor has nine possible different five prime untranslated regions. One role of the set of five prime UTRs is direct, 
to direct expression to different parts of the brain. And BDNF splice variants also respond differently to diet, drugs, and show differences in plasticity, the ability to regrow after death or injury.